Okay, everybody. I have something really cool to tell you about. If you haven't heard yet about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain here. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will uh, distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one single place. Now, the way that you can do this is you got to download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and then you can get started. It's really fun. We just switched over recently here at All Too Real 2 and I'm enjoying it so far. So be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Hey everybody, welcome to All Too Real 2! Okay, anyways, I'm your host, Michael E. Cullen II, and with me as always is my co-host, Matthew Sizzle Steak. Sizzler. Matthew Haas Sizzle Sizzler steak. Yeah. I changed it legally. Did you? Yeah. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do I feel like we we went back in time? Yes. I feel um, like we we're having so, this conversation. So so a little behind the scenes here. We actually just recorded this episode. Not all of it, but uh, started it and uh, realized that the record button wasn't on, so we uh, thought we were, record- were recording, so um, we weren't. So we're trying again here. I do see that the red light is on now, all so right. we, we, we are recording. Cool. So, cool. okay. Yes. Um, technical difficulties. More like uh, Michael Dickel difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> so this week... We are covering yet another direct-to-video sequel because we love ourselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, this week it is the 2002 film Slapshot 2 Breaking the Ice, which uh, is the uh, sequel to the late 70s uh, Paul Newman much better movie um, <laughs> called Slapshot. <laughs> this one um, is uh, directed by Steve Boyum. And written by Broderick Miller, based on characters uh, created by Nancy Dowd from the first film. Um, Steve Boyum, who uh, is a stunt coordinator for movies like Apocalypse Now, um, Lethal Weapon, some of the Mighty Duck movies, so other hockey stuff. Um, he's directed episodes of the Lethal Weapon TV series, Rush Hour TV series. Uh, he also directed the Disney films Meet the Deedles and um, Johnny Tsunami as well as a future film that we will cover on this, Time Cop 2, The Berlin Decision, Mm -hmm. which uh, I really want to cover because it's it's a doozy. (laughs) It's it's actually fun to watch, that one. So we'll we'll get to that one in the future, folks. Um, So um, this movie stars the brilliant... Neglected by the Academy. <laughs> Stephen Baldwin. Yep. Best, yes. The best Baldwin. Yes. Best one. 
Mm-hmm. He's far. groovy like a ten cent movie. Yeah. Yes, he is. And um, he. Uh, <laughs> it also stars uh, Gary Busey, along with the Hanson brothers from the original uh, movie. They come back. They're the only uh, characters and actors that come back. Um, played again by uh, by uh, David Hanson and uh, the Carlson brothers, Jeff and uh, Steve. Yep. So. Still beating people up with their helmets off. Yes. Yep. Yes, they are, and wearing their their uh, nice uh, nerdy glasses and mm-hmm. their long hair, mulletish ha- <laughs> hairs. Anyways, um, so according to the Internet Movie Database, here is the overview of what the film is about. With the original Hanson brothers on the same minor league hockey team, the Charleston Chiefs. Uh, They are sold to a new owner who gives them a female coach and puts them in a league in Omaha, by the way, um, in which they are regularly humiliated by an opposing what they call Harlem Globetrotters-esque team. So the uh, well, they call it the ice. They're they're the they're the uh, icebreakers. Yeah, there you go. Yes. The Omaha icebreakers who are made up of a bunch of like Ivy League uh, hockey players douchebags yeah pretty much just like who are, who are obviously played by canadian actors trying to pretend that they're american <laughs> by the way Anyways, and then making fun of canadian one of the accents. characters yeah that was canadian yeah it's interesting funny but thing. they had heavy accents themselves oh, which yeah. i think yeah. is yeah <laughs> so just, they're they're paid to lose essentially yeah they're basically paid to lose they're kind of like the the washington team that plays the uh what is it the washington uh <clears throat> is it the generals uh, or the senators? Sentinels? Senators, senators, something like that. Yeah, yeah. That, that play the uh, that uh, that play the uh, Harlem Globetrotters and lose all the time. Basically, I mean, they win a few times here and there, but I think they just throw them a bone once in a while and let them win. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we start out with uh, a bunch of profanity and um, randomness um, from. Uh, the wonderful Stephen Baldwin, yeah, being interviewed in a locker room. He's yeah, he's like you know telling them about like what what real hockey is about and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, you got to play real hockey, real man hockey. Sometimes it gets yeah. violent, but you know whatever we got to do, what we got to do right. Yeah. And so, uh, what happens is the team ends up getting sold. So the uh, former owner of the team tells. Uh, tells his character of uh just call him Stephen Baldwin that's that's yeah. who he is well his name is Sean <laughs> Sean Linden is the character's name um the owner tells him that he sold the team to this uh this uh guy that owns a bunch of like family entertainment channels kind of a kind of almost a uh, Rupert Murdoch sort of character played by uh the brilliant brilliant um Gary Busey, his uh, best performance since uh, the Buddy Holly story. Yeah, it is. That's perfect. Yes, he, you know, I, I believed him so much. I mean, I I felt his pain and his anger mm. and his evilness. <clears throat> his evilness, which should have been reserved for someone who truly was evil and had like a plan for world domination. Instead, it's it, because it's, he wants to buy another family channel he, or something like that. He's he's playing the the character like he's a Bond villain. Yeah, <laughs> like, trying like, to take over like, the world. These are very low stakes yes. here in this situation, <laughs> but he treats this like with the <laughs> like the attitude of like taking over the world. Yeah, it's like, like I gotta get this these family channel guys. They're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I want to get their endorsements. It's like okay, cool, but. But you it, do it, realize that, like, this isn't like, if, if 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 this thing fails or succeeds, it's not going to affect the world one way or the other. Honestly, <laughs> I'm just saying. And so they play the whole movie like this, like it's these big stakes that, you know, playing real hockey as opposed to playing, uh, you know, this uh, this um, Broadway directed hockey. Yeah. Is somehow less cool. I mean, I get it. You know, if you're a hockey purist. Yeah. But if somebody's paying you money. My feeling is, I know you can sell out, you know, sure. But my thing is, is if I'm offered millions of dollars or, you know, or hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever, mm-hmm. I'm going to, 
you know, yeah. do what they well, say. Especially maybe. if he's got all these bill, bill collectors after him. Plus, too, like you were saying when we were watching the movie, like, like even though he's being portrayed as like this like evil Bond villain, yeah, like in some ways though he's like completely bending over backwards to like keep people from leaving the team. Like, yeah, because like they're already just from from starting out. They were going to be being paid double their salary from from when they were making when they were um, the the chiefs, and then they got changed to super chiefs, so they're getting double their salary. And then, and then he offered to double the double salary, so now they're getting yeah. quadruple salary than what they were before. Yeah, and yet though, like like and, he's and, also portraying himself as like this Bond villain. Type thing. And and you're still doing something related to what you want to do. It's not like they all of a sudden said, hey, we want you to do porn. Right. I'm on, just, on, on ice. On ice. <laughs> no, it wasn't like something completely different and where it's going to totally, you know, change things. It, it, it'd be like, you know, a filmmaker being asked to direct a Coke commercial or something, you know, or a Pepsi commercial. It's not like you're. K. Martin Scorsese. Yeah. You've had a good career. Yes. Um, but you're going to go out on a high note here to do like a Sprite commercial. Yeah. You know, or whatever. And and they offer him like more than he got paid to do, uh, <laughs> you know, Goodfellas or something. Right. I mean, right. Sure. He's going <laughs> to. It's like, here you go. <laughs> we'll pay you like $500 million to do this one commercial. No. I, I think Scorsese would do I it. I think he I'm... would. <laughs> and he would make jokes about it. Like, yeah, whatever. I made mm-hmm. this much money to do this dumb commercial spike yeah. lee directed uh sprite commercials he did yeah and, oh, really? and uh and he also directed um i think he directed like nike commercials and stuff okay. too so i mean i'm just saying you know it, you can still be an artist and still <laughs> you know be true to your craft whether it's hockey or filmmaking or painting or whatever and still make money i'm just yeah. saying <sighs> Well, I'm not. The, I'm not about capitalism, but I'm just saying. Sometimes you got to sell out a little just to make some money. Just a little bit for so a little, you can pay your bills for a little bit of time. <laughs> That's the other thing too. So I guess the big catch though was that he promised that they would play real games, but then but he never was going to. So him. I guess there was some some concern about. But I never even got the fact that they really weren't going to let him because we only saw a few games. Well, that's the in problem? The movie, so is that they con- every time they were making any kind of progress, like doing what they were supposed to do, they would get into a huge fight on ice. So that would just set them back to where they started. Yeah. So then, of course, you know the guy's going to like punish them by not letting them play real games. Like you guys are kind of your own worst enemies here in this um, so, situation. So, so honestly, the Richard Claremont um, character that Gary Busey plays is the hero of this. Yes. Movie. Yeah. No. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's still the bad guy. But 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 they're but they're kind of like idiots for not even trying to play along a little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> what we sk- we skipped over a lot, I think. Yeah, we did. We did. We were just kind of getting into the meat of yeah. things. But basically, uh, so there's this uh, female that is hired as their uh, <clears throat> as their new coach. Oh, this this is a big deal too. Uh, oh my god, fucking chicks are coach. Yeah. Oh man, what are they? What does she know about hockey? Mm. God, dumb woman. Yeah, she's stupid. got she's got boobs and a vagina. She don't know hockey. She got a nice oh. ass though. It's like okay, she's yeah. your coach. Um, you're not allowed to talk to your coach like that. She's your boss. Yeah. Uh, so someone's got authority over you. You don't. Well, yeah, this is you, 2002. Even if it was, I, I don't know. care if it was 1902. No, I, I'm not saying it's right. I'm no, just I'm saying just, that in films, this was kind of standard. It is, but that's what bothers me about yeah. that, where it's like, I'm like, it, it's just the lack of, I guess for me, I, I don't like, I really dislike lack of professionalism. Oh, I do Like too. if someone's got authority over you. I mean, even though if I might hate it, I like, I'm not gonna like treat this person like they're just like my best buddy or whatever. Like, no, and I, I, if it's I coach understand or whatever. That, yeah, like, if you're if you're treating your boss like that, <clears throat> it's not cool. I mean, you can be friendly with your boss, but you can't be saying that he or she has a nice ass. Nice ass was <laughs> great set of legs was the other um, comment. Uh, if, oh, if we if we could stump you on this stupid hockey trivia that no one cares about, you gotta show us your tits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dumb yeah, bullshit. So, uh, so basically, anyways, they're they're sold off to um, this guy, and they're they're uh, they're relocated to uh, Omaha, Omaha, yeah, somewhere in Middle America, it's Nebra- well, it's Nebraska, but getting right to the heart of matters. No, it's the heart that matters more. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry, that's a County Crows song. Oh, it was okay. just called Omaha. Anyways, um, 
Hopefully they don't sue us for copyright. No. There. Anyways, no. um, <laughs> no, you're like a super fan. Yes, I so. am. Shout out to Adam Duritz. Anyways, um, <laughs> they uh, they 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 have to go to Omaha, and uh, they are playing this uh, other team called the Icebreakers, the Omaha Icebreakers, which are the globetrotter esque team that are made up of a bunch of uh, a bunch of actors who uh, did I say this already about their 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 accents? Their accents are Canadian. Yeah, and they make fun of one of the characters Guys, from the other team for being, being Canadian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They they they're all like Yale douchebags they're just yeah these, these all, all these yale douchebags named skipper and trent and yeah like these typical yeah. names that you would but, I mean, but only no, one of them ever talks no offense to we, the we, other skipper, yeah, no. skipper's the only one that yeah. ever talks everyone else just makes faces yeah or at one at one point the guy gave someone the middle finger that was about the only communication mm-hmm. other than him oh and they all get sick because oh you just like in the america pie presents band camp um we got the old um, drugging the other team with really dangerous amounts of Viagra that could actually probably cause cardiac arrest. Yeah, it's some um, kind of some kind of uh, you know penis pills of some sort, either Viagra or generic, or whatever, whatever it yeah. is. They they put them in this orange juice for this mm-hmm. uh, big uh, um, celebrity bachelor auction that the uh, that the that the icebreakers have to go to, and one of the one of the guys on the uh, on the now called Super Chiefs yeah. um, team. That used to be the Chiefs. They decided to call them Super Chiefs because Chiefs was offensive. And that's what they're worried about. But Anyways, super, um, <laughs> super Chiefs means they're extra Chiefs, so it'd be equally more offensive than... No, they would, they were saying that a Super Chief is a type of train. Oh, yeah, that's so right. That's okay. They, yeah. But they probably named the train after... Yes, Okay, exactly. whatever. Okay. Yeah, so. we're not going to go okay. there. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> I, um, so, they, uh... They put these penis pills in some orange juice that they that these guys eat at a that these guys drink at a at a breakfast or brunch or whatever that they're having right before the thing, and uh, the guys are all up on stage and they all get um, hard ons. And then the old and ladies. There's all old ladies betting on them, or not betting. I mean, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. or, uh, or whatever uh, bidding, bidding on them, not betting. And they keep you know raising more money because they they want that D. You know these yeah. eighty year old women they. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, it doesn't matter just because they're 80. The, the, mean... the one woman unplugs the other yeah. woman's oxygen tank so she can't bid anymore. Oh, the, the, like, like the kids say, or they did two years ago, the thirst is real. Did I say that right? Am I am sure <laughs> that's even the phrase or not? I don't think I've ever uh, heard this phrase in my life, yeah, so I don't thir- know. Thirsty is a big thing now that people say. Well, I, I understand that, but yeah. yeah, I just I didn't. Yeah, I the know. thirst is real. I, I think it's a stupid. That phrase, sounds like a. That sounds like that should be the 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 ad for the Martin Scorsese it should uh, be. Sprite commercial. It should be. The thirst is real. It should be. It's got a double meaning though. But <laughs> the um, <laughs> I can just see it now. I can see the whole. <laughs> and then he got like a. Robert De Niro reprising his role from uh, Taxi Driver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> wow. Do you ever notice that Robert De Niro mm. played a lot of stalkers in movies? No. I mean, I only saw that one where he was a stalker. He, he was in Cape Fear as a stalker. Okay, yeah, all right. He was in that. He was in The Fan. I didn't see that one. Is that with Wesley Snipes? Yeah. yeah I didn't see that he, one. He basically is a, is a guy that's like a super fan of Wesley Snipes who's playing for... Uh, um, major league baseball team and he's like stalking him and stuff doesn't he like kidnap his daughter or something i don't know i don't it's been years since i've seen okay, it but i just right, remember so. he was a stalker in it and then king of comedy which is another scorsese film he he basically is like obsessed with jerry lewis's like uh johnny carson type character that he uh starts stalking and stuff that's a great so that's, movie. that's a great movie yeah that's at least four movies there's probably more and goodfellas he um starts stalking uh, Ray Liotta's wife at one point. I mean, that's not, that's not his main role in the no, movie, no. but he like because he tries to like get her killed inside of like some like warehouse where they got like a bunch of stolen clothing that he wants to sell to her. Yeah, but she, he's really trying to get her killed. So so that's five. We count five right there. And he kind of stalks Ben Stiller and meet the parents. So <laughs> yeah, um, a little I'm joking. bit. <laughs> but that was because he was suspicious. Yeah. Something. So that I'll, I'll I'll let that one slide. I will too. I was just joking with yeah, that one but um anyways uh back to this movie yeah this is a great movie yes so much better than the movies we're talking yeah, about you know and goodfellas and yeah don't don't ever watch goodfellas or king no. of comedy or meet the parents or anything watch <laughs> slap shot two <laughs> yes <laughs> there's no robert de niro in there but there is gary Busey, man oh yeah yeah, yeah there is another another academy <clears throat> award nominated actor i think so oh yeah, yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, was, I think it was nominated for a Buddy Holly story. Okay. Which, if you haven't seen, and you actually want to see I a really, seen it. if you want to see a great movie with, we we might cover it for our other podcast, um, our All Too Real podcast. How old was he um, when he did that? Sorry, he was pretty young when he did that. Okay. It was like in the seventies or eighties okay. that they made that movie, and it's the best performance of his whole career, in my opinion. Hmm. And then after that, it kind of went downhill. <laughs> oh well, sometimes. <laughs> but he, it but he did all of his own singing, and he. I don't know. He looked just like Buddy Holly in the movie and everything. He was hmm. really good. Anyways, um, back to this masterpiece. Um, so they, uh, yeah, the, the, they, they drugged. So, so we have drugging just like an American Pie band camp. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a common theme in these direct-to-video sequels. <laughs> drugging the, the opposite team or whoever you're opposing. Mm-hmm. Uh, rampant sexism. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just comments about women but comments to women that in 2019 if if one one hundredth uh were said to a woman like in a restaurant that were said like in this there's a one scene alone where they probably committed about 50 sex crimes in that like two minute scene of well, they like, weren't really crimes they were harassment well, well, so i mean it's still it's still a crime but i'm just saying what i'm saying well, is yeah, it's they're not were, like they're going to be convicted for it no really. i mean like they, yeah. they didn't physically do anything but it's being no. like like you know like the guy literally is telling the waitress to like basically take off her shirt yeah and it's like uh yeah I mean, what like I, I i just wanted to be clear that you know saying something to a woman i'm not saying that it's right it's 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 socially wrong and it's uh and it's morally wrong and stuff like that but it's not the same as raping a woman which is when you think well, of sexual or, or like or like sexually har- right. sexually sexual assault and sexual harassment are both bad okay but i think sexual assault is worse than right, so when well, i see sex crimes right. i think of assault more. all right I'm, I'm just i'm just saying that but that's just my own opinion but i think they're both just almost <laughs> as bad okay because words can hurt just as bad as right you know Right, sticks well, and stones may break my bones, but words will hurt me, man. They will. Okay. They will. That's well, I'll, I'll nix then sex crime, but basically, then like yeah. the one guy who's kind of like a he's like a sex addict kind of yeah. guy. He's telling the waitress like, "Oh, you should probably button down your shirt," but then he goes yeah. even further and says like, "She just take her shirt off, basically." I think. Yeah. And then she goes, and she like you know just like centers herself, you know, because that's what a woman's supposed to do is just take it, mm-hmm. you know, type of thing. Two thousand two, and um which, you know, isn't really that long ago, but, uh, and then, um, then she goes to the next table and then like the guy, one of the guys says something like, what, what's <laughs> the, the snatch of the week or the day or whatever. Yeah, so it, that's it like, a really it's, it's a joke. really bad, inappropriate, mean, uh, spirited thing. And I mean, like, it was bad on several levels. And that not was, even funny either. No, it wasn't even funny. <laughs> no, but, but that, that, that scene alone, there was, I mean, it was like every single character, like male character, yeah. And besides, like the dude who's got like the mental issues, he was the only one that was like actually respectful. Like, oh yeah, didn't even say anything, you know, which Never. you know makes him the good guy because he didn't, he didn't like you know make a lewd comment. <laughs> it was so, there's so those, so that's that's the main theme in these these director video sequels. And then uh, there's usually homophobia. Check, we got that. Uh, sometimes transphobia. Check, we got that. So yeah, you know, pretty much anything that like people nowadays would think is like bad like every single one of those things it did but, it, but and, interesting and, not racism that was the only thing no because they're pretty accepting of that I mean, was interesting. there was a, there was a, there was an african-american player on the team yeah and, but also they didn't yeah. make any jokes like racial no. jokes so that's like so no. they were they were okay on race i mean the closest they got is when they asked who the first brother to play in the nhl was yeah. but that wasn't like <laughs> racist that was just kind of a fact right so. and um but the uh you know, in in the whole like, there, there's a trans trans, trans uh, vestite. Oh yeah. What they call you know um mm-hmm. thing where they're watching like Jerry Springer or something, and somebody <clears throat> reveals on that show that the while well, they're in a bar, that was a whole segment of the movie that didn't need to be in there. It didn't it further didn't, the it plot. Was just it didn't there do anything. To, it was just there to uh, you know punish transgender people. Is what like like. I know I don't I don't want to get too political on this stuff, but just like that's yeah. like transgender people, unfortunately, have been like the butt of like so many jokes in movies where they just they just need to have a, a laugh, basically. Yeah, like, I mean, it's like, got nothing like, to do like with Ace Ventura. The, you know, oh, that's one example. of the worst yeah. ones ever. And um, and then, uh, but yeah, like was, of course Jerry Springer himself, he's he's totally guilty of this. Oh he's yeah, got so many episodes of this kind of crap, and 
you know but yeah this 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 not only was not only was the line unfunny and inoffensive it just it just didn't even belong it, there's no reason why it even needed to be there it was just this movie's too short and so we need to fill in as much crap as possible to make sure it's at least 80 minutes long like that's pretty much what it was it's it, it's uh, a it's a lack of good writing in that it in was that, in that part um but uh but so so you know like things go on between them as we go on um do you want to take a break matt oh yeah sure yeah let's yeah. uh let, let's let's uh let, let's take a break and listen to some uh Nice little ads from our our sponsors. Cool for uh, products and or services. We'll be right back here. At all too real too. In the magical world of Hearth, there are wizards, there are sorcerers, and there are magi. And none of them know what they're doing. That's how the best spells are discovered. Throw it at the wall and read the tea leaves. Or scorch marks. Witness the wonders of magic, science, and property damage in a radio drama of phantasmical proportions. Face my mastery. Magus Elgar, now available for download wherever audiobooks are sold. Listen to the first three episodes for free on YouTube. Hi, folks. This is Michael E. Cullen II from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay, anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. OK, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Super Story podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it. Uh, sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we don't. Um, just depends on how we're feeling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter. Then you should definitely check this out, or I might get sad. And when I get sad, it gets pretty sad. Yeah, so I can't deal with him when he's sad. Yeah, no one can really. So um, yeah. So, so check out a uh, Super Story podcast right here, where you get this podcast, Super Story podcast. And we're back. Yeah, we are. Hope you enjoyed those uh, products and/or services. Uh, I did. We slap back. Ooh, because a slap shot. Get yeah, slap back. I, yeah, uh, we're back. We're back with a slap. Well. Oh, yeah, slap shot. Yes. Uh, the services were good and the products. Yes. No products, more so the services, but... No. Well, no, they were both equally good. Well, okay, maybe. Sometimes they're both. Yeah. <clears throat> like, my favorite product right now are Pop-Tarts. But if you can if you can put that into a service as well, built-in service... Like some like not like, only, like like if the pop tarts did your taxes for you or something yeah or if someone you pay someone to make you pop tarts just someone to go in your house if you're too lazy to open the box should open up a pop tart restaurant yes ooh actually that wouldn't be a bad idea all they do is serve pop tarts <laughs> well yeah but no they probably should do something else with it <laughs> like make them into pies or or, or ice cream toppings or something <laughs> I don't think that would work out if they just serve pop tarts. <laughs> It's just, That's a, it. it's just a paper plate yeah. with a couple of chocolate pop yep. tarts on it. That's it. That's it. We only have like three flavors too. Yeah, we, we don't even have all of them. <laughs> no, no, no. If you want to get the fucking wild berry, go get it yourself. Yeah. Go we, down to the grocery store and buy it yourself. We don't do the gimmick flavors here, okay? We do classics. <laughs> Strawberry, frosted or not frosted, though if you're not doing frosted, mm, there's something wrong with you. But um, yes. uh chocolate and or s'mores, preferably put together. Uh uh, brown sugar that's a classic one not my yeah. favorite but it's a classic all the new flavors no i don't want no. fucking jolly rancher green flavored pop tarts i don't want a and w um, root beer pop tarts no i don't want um <laughs> sardine pickle relish flavored pop tarts stop but those with, are so good stop man. It with the gimmick shit okay those that's, are so good have you had those no can i go on a rant for a second yeah go ahead okay i know it's got nothing to do with the movie but i'm so tired of gimmick foods I hate it. I hate this idea. And the thing is, too, they these companies who do this stuff, they've admitted themselves that the only reason why they do this is because they want to make viral videos where people will try out the shitty flavors and then film themselves on YouTube and they get free publicity. They've actually admit some of these companies yes. have actually admitted that that's the only reason why. Like, I'm gonna make gefilte fish flavored Pringles so that some moron on YouTube is going to eat a whole Swedish fish of flavored Oreos. <laughs> that's an actual well, that, thing. That's, that's an actual. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, 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 I hate it. Or, or, or the pickle 
and I'm even guilty of this. The the um the pickle juice slushy from from um um why well, was I gonna say chaos? Wow. Um, what's the what's the name of the Sonic? No Sonic. <laughs> why do I think of chaos? It's the name of because the... it's all chaos. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I got a drive-in called chaos. No. What's uh, what's chaos mean? Uh, chaos. What do you mean? That's how chaos is spelled. Whenever I the first time I ever saw it. It was on my, oh, really? my my friend. My friend had chaos on his T-shirt, and I couldn't pronounce it. And I was like, "What's chouse What's mean?" What's chouse mean? <laughs> he had like a. It was like a. It was like a, a um, Jurassic Park T-shirt that said chaos on it. Wow. And I was like, "What's chouse? What's mean? chouse, man?" Because <laughs> I had never seen Jurassic <laughs> Park at that point. Oh my god! Because I, I boycotted that movie for like twenty years. Oh really? So um. Anyway. <laughs> but now I now I love it. Anyways, um, the uh, <laughs> so. We can go back to the movie, but I just yeah, I hate gimmick foods. I hate yes. it. I just want to remind people that the uh, the the comments of Matt <laughs> Matt and I are only the comments yeah. of Matt and I, yeah. not the thoughts of um, All Too Real Two or Cullen Park Productions. Yeah. Even though we are All Too Real Two and it, Cullen but, Park Productions, but our comments are only for us, <laughs> not yes. the company that we represent, which is us. <laughs> So keep that in mind. <laughs> yes. So, you know. Hey, corporations are people and we're protecting the person. Yes. As- so, so so I just wanna I just wanna remind Oreo and Pop Tarts and Pringles. <laughs> I'm sitting there making fun of all these companies. I just wanna remind you that if you would like to sponsor us, you can contact me at Mike at Cullen yeah, Park. Maybe, maybe not contact me because I'll <laughs> I'm apparently have no tact. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they're gonna sponsor us anyways. Well, maybe in yeah. the future. I've never, I've never listened to a a uh, a podcast because I listened to a bunch of them mm. where there was a pop tart ad. Well, that sucks. They should start doing. I know. That. I did. I did hear like you know, there's like diaper ads and stuff for like brand name diapers, which I'm not gonna mention because <sighs> I don't, I don't want to give any free advertising. I don't want to, but it, it made th- no sense to me because the podcast that I was listening to, <laughs> I'm not gonna say what one it was or anything, but it was more like geared towards like technology and stuff hey maybe these te- all these tech guys are having kids and you know that's these, what i'm like, thinking I, I, tech just, people. I was just trying to figure out why i'm listening to this technology podcast and all of a sudden i'm getting a pampers ad or whatever it was or huggies or what i don't know what it, which brand it was but it was mm. just like okay um <laughs> is this really your target demo here um i don't know but here's the thing though mm. i've been having great ideas lately for like brand stuff and mm-hmm. like for like campaign e stuff i got a great campaign idea for for beto roke the the politician from texas yes i actually want to work on this campaign because i came up with a great freaking gimmick last night i'm not gonna say it here yeah i was gonna say don't share it with i don't, I don't want anyone taking no, ideas no, no i'm not because I, I don't i don't trust our, our awesome audience sorry guys yeah even though you listen to us and you're our um metaphorical at this point bread and butter um i don't trust you enough to, to tell if you own a bread and or butter company and would like to sponsor All Too Real 2, please contact me at Mike at Uh But what I'm saying, though, is like it was made perfect like like, like Pop Tart. Like they call a pop cast instead of a podcast. It's a pop cast. That would be- and they could do like little tiny episodes, like five minute episodes. Like here's your weekly pop cast from Wild Berry Pop Tarts, the shittiest flavor of all. Um- <laughs> Again, these are just the thoughts of uh, Matt and I. Um- okay, let's get, let's probably get back to the movie. So uh, Slapshot 2, Breaking the Ice. <laughs> Uh, Stephen Baldwin, we're Gary Busey, slap happy here. Yes, a uh, little slap shot happy. Yeah, and um, the uh, so 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 next, in, I mean the the next big thing is there's a character named Miller, mm-hmm. um, played by uh, this actor, uh, David um, Duchovny. No, not David Duchovny. Oh, okay. Pay- he's, he's got a last name, and um. <laughs> That I can't pronounce. <laughs> it's P A E T K A U. Pay to cow? I don't know. Something like that. Right. Anyways, um, I've seen him in a much better hockey movie called Goon, um, starring Sean William Scott, written by Jay Barishaw. Anyways, um, 
and co-starring Jay Barishaw and Leah Schreiber. Anyways, oh, um, sweet. yeah, I, I highly recommend that movie. Uh, that's my own personal opinion. If you want to watch a good hockey movie <clears throat> um, with a heart. Hot. Hockey with a heart of gold. Yes. But anyways, he's in that movie. But anyways, in this movie, he's kind of the one that is like thinking of trying to be the future uh, future uh, NHL star or whatever. And he's kind of pissed that he's in this in this uh, goofy league that he's in, you know. And uh, so he wants to play real hockey and not mm-hmm. uh, this Broadway hockey that they're doing now, mm-hmm. you know, which, by the way, the the whole thing's choreographed and organized by um, a uh, stereotypical gay character in the like, movie. Like that, way, like even, even comes more straight from Broadway. Yeah. Like even more flamboyantly caricatured than the dude from Will and Grace. Yeah. If you can imagine that, like mm-hmm. it's that, like if you can imagine that character, if you can imagine Jack from Will and Grace. This it's is like, about it's, 10 times more it, than it, that. It's, it's like, it's like Sean Hayes on acid. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's like their coach or whatever. Uh, yeah, or something. I think he's their coach. And, uh, yeah, and, and he's and he's like written and choreographed the whole hockey game. Yeah, for both teams. Yes, and they're supposed to. And he's mad at the other team, the Super Chiefs, because they never really play what they're by supposed his to rules. do. They which, do which, for a which, little bit, but then which, they, which is hilarious because there's an announcer for the for, oh for yeah, the games this guy who I I love. He's like one of my favorite characters in the thing. He's got a really small part, but he he'll be announcing the game, and then the Super Chiefs are changing what they're doing. And he's like, is there even a fucking script? You know, no, yeah. just like, <laughs> and then he's, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. This is a live mic. I apologize. Because <laughs> there's so, supposed to be no swearing, no yeah. fighting. And, you know, and he's given a script, you know, about what's supposed to happen. Yeah. And then, like, they like, get into a fight. Is anybody reading the fucking script? <laughs> <laughs> and, like, he's like, no, no one ever fills me in on these things or or the Chiefs or Super Chiefs or whatever they call themselves. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the dude from... um. Major League, oh yeah, bit. a little not, bit like not Bob Uecker, but as not as good. Yeah, crude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not as good. But. No, but yeah, um, the uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's one of the funny parts, and um, you know, but but like Miller's trying to basically become. He he's the one. I was he the one that uh, put the dick pills in the. <clears throat> yeah, he was. Yeah, he was the dude that. He put it in the coffee and the juice. Yeah, or in orange juice. Mm-hmm. Which again, <clears throat> the sheer amount that he put in the orange juice. <clears throat> could have given someone heart uh, cardiac arrest but not only that some medications if you if you like um mix it with certain like citrus stuff it actually makes it more potent even so oh, yeah. he could have been really actually really fucking these guys I know, I've, I've, I've had I've, i mean especially like if it was a if it was like grapefruit juice it would have been even yeah. worse but yeah, but yeah grapefruit, grapefruit big... juice is not good for a lot of medicines yeah. um so that could have been really bad for yeah. you know killing all these people you know these poor <laughs> Not poor guys, but these guys, you these, know. Uh, these douchey guys these named, du- yeah. named Trent and Skipper. Trent and, stuff. and Skipper and uh, Ethan. Yeah. Well, Ethan's not. I mean, there's a lot of people. Ethan no. Hawk. I mean, yeah. You know. But but still, they. I mean, this Trent's not a bad name. Trent Reznor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. They're, they're, but but I'm saying they're just stereotypical. Yeah. You know. <laughs> D bag mm. names. Anyways, the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh man. So we got to speed through this because I I uh, we're getting a little too. Uh, yeah. All right, that's fine. No, I just, I just, this, I, um, well, I will mention there was one other uh, scene that had a funny line in it. The, the only funny line I really laughed at that Stephen Baldwin said was uh, <laughs> th- this Miller guy is sitting next to him and he's wearing like this, uh, this like a uh, big uh, chain around his neck and he's got a, he's got a, uh, a like a, a hat on and stuff and he's got like a tank top on and everything and uh, <laughs> sitting in this diner and he's like, and he says what he'll have to the person. He says, and says something and and whatever Eminem's having or something yeah. like that. <laughs> whatever, yeah. So I can't remember exactly how he said it, but he called him Eminem, and I thought that was funny. There, there, yeah, there were a few good <laughs> yeah. lines in here that stood out from the rest of the monotony and um, weirdness. Yeah, uh, the not good weirdness um, of it. <clears throat> so, uh, what else we gotta say about this? So basically, what ends up happening is they fire the Hanson brothers because they're too. Um, Hansony. Yeah, and um, <laughs> pretty much <laughs> the um, the two uh, you know, they fight too much and they're too uh, crude and you know, making fart jokes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, anyways, uh, the Hansons go off and we find out that the Hansons won the lottery. Yeah, like one hundred fifteen million dollars. Yeah, and so uh, at one point, um, 
Gary Busey's character tries to pay off Stephen Baldwin's character to um, basically go away after convincing the team to like you know fall in line, mm. and uh, they uh, um, he does go away, but then he decides to come back mm. after watching a Sports Center type show or something talking about him, and um, <laughs> yeah, from his past, yeah, because he used to be a like, really good hockey player, and, and he gambled on the game or something. Well, no, he. he he never gambled against himself. He never gambled on the game, but he did have a gambling problem. Yeah. And and uh, so uh, it's kind of a Pete Rose sort of thing. Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah. Pete Rose, who should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame, damn it. Sorry. <clears throat> you've, got, you've, got, you've, you've got Ty Cobb in there. Come on. <clears throat> Pete he Rose. beat up a guy in the stands, and he's in the <clears throat> fucking Hall of Fame. Pete but, Rose got his <clears throat> inspiration from Ty, Ty Cobb. Cobb. But still... I'm well, that's what I'm saying. saying. If if his inspiration yeah. is in there, then well, he did. And, and Pete Rose played Ty Cobb in a movie <clears throat> once too. He did. Yeah, like it was a made-for-TV movie about Babe Ruth or something. He huh. played Ty Cobb in it. So yeah. Anyways, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but he was one of the greatest baseball players who ever lived, and my favorite baseball player ever, honestly. So. Side note. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> he also Let's, did that commercial for Atari Baseball. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Best commercial ever. Best game ever. No, Atari Bowling is the best. Game <laughs> yeah. Ever. Anyways, is. um, <laughs> let's slap back at this and okay. um, <laughs> the uh, my puns would be a lot better if I knew anything about sports. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> the uh, the um, the the so 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 basically they they start to fall in line a little bit and but then uh, Stephen Baldwin comes back. After he realizes it and uh, tells them what's up. And then uh, he brings with him the Hanson brothers and a box full of their old jerseys. Mm -hmm. So they put on their old jerseys and they come out as the Chiefs and they start playing real hockey and they start beating people up. (laughs) You know, and and that's when the announcer goes crazy. And then um, what's his face and um, uh, Gary Busey and his... uh, cohorts go kind of crazy they're like what the fuck is going on here they, these these like these 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 <clears throat> these uh american first sort of people yeah these, like all, these like yeah. moral values yeah you know? and uh yeah and then they uh i don't know they the the um Busey's like second in command sort of guy who is like the lawyer put in charge of the of the super chiefs for some reason, yeah, he sold. The <laughs> they didn't team. even explain why he, he, he was told. He was told to just you know take care of it himself, and so he decided to take care of it himself, and he grew some balls. Yeah, and and uh, he, and, and he sold the team to the Hansons, right? Because they, they won so much money. Yeah, and so million. so after uh, things things started to go to well go mm-hmm. well, um, after that the the game got high ratings or something, and he punches in, and then Gary that guy Busey. that guy punches Gary Busey yeah. after he's now with the team, and then they're gonna. You know, they're going to start playing real hockey again. Yeah. You know, Gordy. Yeah, Gordy. Yeah. <laughs> and also, too, I, I forgot to mention that the, the coach, their coach, she was the granddaughter of, like, some really famous oh, yeah. hockey player. Yeah. I forgot. Because I was going to mention that, but then we, we kept talking about oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. funny. Weird yeah, shit. basically, that's what she, that's why she was hired. Mm-hmm. And she used to be, like, a female hockey coach at some uh, uh, some college. I can't remember. Some. Like, Vassar or something. They won, like, something. four yeah. out of five championships in a row or something like yeah. that. Um, but she really wants to coach in the NHL. Yeah. So, and and, and in the end, uh, Stephen Baldwin and her kiss. Of course. You know, they got to get together. Get, that, get yeah. together. And, yeah. then, uh, and then the credits roll. Yep. Best movie ever. Yes. Right up there with the. Uh, American uh, Pie Bandcamp. American Pie Bandcamp and um, Tooth Fairy Two. Tooth Fairy Two and uh, what was the other one? Inspector Gadget Two. No, the other Larry Cable guy. What oh, was Jingle one? All the Way. Yes, yeah, Jingle All the Way Two. Yep. Yeah, <clears throat> I will tell you this: Stephen Baldwin is a better actor than Larry the Cable Guy. Yes. <clears throat> what did that guy say in um, Jingle All the Way Two? It was um, <clears throat> mild mannered. Toy store employee by day, purveyor purveyor of childhood fantasies by night. Yes, <laughs> really was, creepy. That was a really creepy line. <laughs> oh god, I uh, love these movies. Yep, <laughs> anyway. we do it though for you, sort of. Yes, mm, or maybe. for ourselves. For I ourselves. Think, <laughs> I, don't know. I did read an article the other day. Okay, that says people who watch bad movies are more intelligent than people that don't. Oh. That it, that find enjoyment out of watching bad movies. <clears throat> 
was that okay? But mm, is there a caveat for that though? Because like the people who wrote these glowing reviews for um, um, not Jingle All the um, Tooth Fairy Two, yeah, they took enjoyment from this movies too. Mm-hmm. So does the article mean people who watch bad movies on purpose because, because they're they bad? Know, because they're okay. bad. That's what like, they mean. Okay, good. It's not, uh... Good because there are some people there that gave that a ten out of ten review. Yes, uh, Tooth Fairy Two. So I don't trust that. Uh, but uh, anyways, let's take another quick break here, sure. speaking of that, and then um, we'll get into some reviews of this film right after we get back from these words from our sponsors. All right. Hey, folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what what do we do, Matt? We we watch biopics, and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we it's a lot we, more exciting than that, though. Yeah. So, so 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 we we analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah. They're, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and. Uh, a futile and stupid gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh, we're going to cover a lot more. So uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts. And be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too, too real. real. Bye bye. Okay, and we're. Back. I don't know why I just did that. Back to the show. Back. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with me tonight. Back. Back to the show. Okay. Anyways, um, baby back ribs, barbecue sauce. What the hell? By the way, Chili's. If you would like to sponsor us, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, Oh, man. Okay, so I'm combing through here in uh, the Internet Movie a Database um, for some uh, for some user reviews of this uh, glorious film that we just watched. Um, Johnny W. here gives this film a 10 out of 10. His headline is The Puck Stops Here. Okay. I'm already angry. I know. This is what he says. Okay, I've always been one of those uh, sequel is never as good as the original people. But let me tell you that Uh -uh. Slapshot 2 Breaking the Ice is the exception to that rule. I'll probably get laughed at for this, but the original Slapshot does not even compare to this cinematic work of art. Are you fucking kidding me? Which is probably one of the best sequels to ever come out of Hollywood. I think this guy's joking, by the way. I think he is. Because then he says, be. as is Speed 2 Cruise Control. Okay, yeah. He's, he's got to be joking. He's... You suck. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still read this, though, just because it's funny. It says, Paul Newman's performance in the original slap shot does not hold a candle to the fine acting portrayed by the charming Stephen Baldwin. Stephen wowed us all with his role as Barney Rubble in the Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and he strikes again in this movie, proving that he really is Hollywood's sequel king. As if Baldwin wasn't enough reason to see this film, you have an all-star cast, including A-list celebrity Gary Busey. Some are skeptical of Busey's talent, but come on, rookie of the year, the ginger dead man. Um, the guy's got, got a resume that can't be topped by anyone in Hollywood, except for maybe... Uh, um, Jake Busey, who oh obviously got the acting gene from his, his dad. son. <laughs> wow. I own this movie on both VHS and DVD, <laughs> and I'm anxiously awaiting the Blu-ray release. <laughs> wow. Please pick up this movie. You will not be disappointed. Better yet, it's fun for the whole family, so you can share this film with your children. My boys are 15 and 17 and love it. So pop that popcorn, take a seat, and get set for some cinematic 
gold. <laughs> this is the best review I've wow. ever read. <laughs> I know it's a joke, but this is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was great. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I did find another 10 for 10. Okay. And it says, it's pretty good. <laughs> and they gave it a 10 for 10. Yeah, it the highest rating possible. <laughs> it's pretty good. It was very funny. Nothing wrong with it at all. Mm. Cut it some slack. It's got its funny parts. Sure, it's no original. But what is? It had its moments where it's dumb. The Hanson's, Hanson brothers add a bit of funny humor back to the movie. The original cannot be topped. Nothing can top that. It was so funny. But the sequel is not that bad. The acting could have been better, and the plot could have been funnier, but it was pretty good. Altogether, if you're a hockey fan, you can find some humor in it. Um, there are many sports movies above this, though. <clears throat> Miracle is by far the best hockey movie ever made. Slapshot 2 may have been viewed as awful, but you have to go into it with an open mind. That's for sure. There's mm-hmm. parts where it is very, very good and parts where it's awful. But come on, people. Cut it some slack and laugh about it. It's a good movie deep down. 10 out of 10. It, really. I, I don't think you understand how ratings work. Like, yeah. That, I mean, that's like a 6 out of 10 rating. Yeah. Like, or maybe seven. I don't know. Yeah, maybe seven. But yeah. Ten. Like, if you're going to rate something ten out of ten, mm-hmm. that's supposed to be a glowing review. Not, it's all right. It's not perfect, but what is? Mm, okay. Yeah. That's not how you rate things, but okay. So, uh, let's find a bad review of this. Sure. Okay, Here, here's one from, uh, <laughs> this is... Zion. Okay. X Y O N. I guess there's how you pronounce it. I'm just guessing. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, anyways, um another sequel that should never have been made. <laughs> please, please, please tell me what's the point of this movie? Why make a sequel if you aren't going to be original? The plot and the jokes are pretty much recycled from the first movie. The first movie was good. It was a cult classic. The French translation of the first movie was a masterpiece. What? (laughs) I still say that the French translated version of the first movie is better than the original English version. What? Both are good in their own ways. Here, though, we get a bad attempt from... Um, the dubbing company to recapture the magic of the original French <laughs> translation. This person must be French. Um, okay. But their review's written in English. Um, oh, okay. Anyway, okay. French translation. But all we mm-hmm. get is badly translated movie. If you want my opinion, this movie belongs in the trash can along with other bad sequels. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least, you know, someone who's got some sense here. Yes. Okay, here's another one from uh, Frame Dog. Where do they get these weird screen names? Frame Dog. I don't know. I, I I wish I can come up with a weird screen name, but I it always makes sense what I come up with. It's never a random. I had a random one. So, okay. You know when I was when I was like on AOL Instant Messenger, I was Byron MC squared. Right. But there was meaning behind yeah. it though. Yeah. Maybe there's meaning behind Frame Dog. Too. Yeah. All right. See, that's what I'm saying. You yeah. know, it could be. You know, maybe that's maybe. You know, maybe. Maybe he uh you know makes picture frames and. He likes dogs. It's, yeah. Or maybe he has a dog. Who knows? Um, <laughs> this one says avoid at all costs. Good. Um, this movie has no originality. Paper thin characters and plot that missed the heart of the first movie. I don't even see how they can can or would dare to call this a slap shot movie. The original was all real hockey. This is 90% computer generated trash. It didn't seem like that to me really. Honestly. It wasn't really computer. Um, the, uh, the original was... Um, fall on the floor hilarious I didn't even crack a smile at this waste the director <laughs> had his head up his rear when he was making this movie because every time it shows uh, um, Charlton Chief's owner by the way 
in the last movie, didn't they move the Chiefs to Minnesota? Question mark. Um, it is a uh, in a tight headshot. The whole idea of the first movie was to have fun and bring the hockey attitude out, and it did it did that very well. This plays out more like a D grade drama with some poorly executed jokes stolen from the original movie. F avoid like the plague. Okay. Yeah. Man. Anyways, um, so anger management issues. I mean, we thought it was stupid, but man, that's an angry review. Yeah, man. it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was bad. It just wasn't like not bad to like. It wasn't the worst movie I've ever hate seen. Your, hate your life over. I mean, I've seen two thirty two. <laughs> Anyways, um, so have I. Yeah, both of us together. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. we. We, I think we kept our sanity together by watching it together. Yes. So, um, my, oh my, I have a couple questions okay. for you, Matt, yep. before we wrap this, uh, <clears throat> wrap before, this. before we slap this up. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I love it. <laughs> before we slap an ending on this podcast. Yeah. Anyways, um, what is your favorite sports movie ever? <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, <clears throat> Dang it! Uh, there's there's quite a few actually. Um, probably Cool Runnings. Okay, that's probably. A good movie. Yeah, that's yeah. a good movie. Yeah, I'd say mine is probably either Major League or Rudy. Okay, one of those two. Major League, which was very influenced by Slapshot. So yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah, because basically, uh, Major League is like Slapshot and Bad News Bears with adults and. Mm-hmm baseball i don't know anyways um <laughs> i still have major league three by the way that you let me borrow back in may okay i'll I get still, that, that that's still, good that's I fine we can talk about that later okay. anyways um <laughs> so would you recommend Slapshot two breaking the ice no i i wouldn't personally yeah. no yeah i mean this is one of those movies that maybe i'd watch if i was stuck in a cabin in the middle of the <laughs> woods and this was the only dvd i had like if you're Mindy St. Clair on like the medium place and that's the only movie yes. you have. Yes. I can see that. Mm-hmm. And the warm beer. Well, you don't drink, but like no. warm soda. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah, this would probably be in one of my medium place movies. It's not like horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd probably be one of those things that if I watched it like 50 times, I'd eventually start to like it. Yeah, I can see that. Like a, a Stockholm Syndrome type of or a slap home syndrome, if you will, <laughs> or or it'd be like on How I Met Your Mother, where uh, they're they're listening to uh, the song in the car, the I would walk five hundred miles and I would, walk, <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. it's like it's like they start to hate it, and it's like don't worry, it comes back around again. Yeah. I think that's what this movie after would do. After a certain time, yeah. like you go through the cycle, <laughs> yeah, and then now you love it again. Yes, because that what the tape got stuck in the tape it, player, yeah. the only thing I could play. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's kind of what this movie would be to me. Anyways, I don't think I'd ever watch it again voluntarily, no. though. Um, so, <clears throat> not as, it, like the one we saw last week was good. The Cutting Edge Two. Yeah, I would watch. Which that may again. or may not have aired before this or after this. We don't right, know well, what, okay. what, what, what order we're what airing order. these in. Just a little behind the scenes uh, <clears throat> knowledge. But I did like that one. Mm-hmm. I, I would watch that one again. Yes. Not as good though as like I said about if they get up to Cutting Edge Seven. I want. I want to name the title, Cutting Edge Seven. Seven Blades for Seven Brothers. If yes. that's not the title, then there's something really wrong. And then uh, Cutting Edge 8 can be a crossover movie with the Slapshot movies. Yeah. And you just have the Hanson Brothers as, like, the villains who start killing people with ice skates. Yep. That's what I want. Yeah. I just really want to watch. I, I think I want to make a ice hockey horror film. Anyways. Yeah, there um, we go. Yes. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we'll just go off and do that now, Matt. Maybe, yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll make it right now. Yes, we will. Okay. Anyways, um, we're going to go break into an arena and make this movie. <clears throat> and uh, so it'll be called uh, Slapshot 7, the Hanson Slap Back. <laughs> and um, the... <laughs> the um, and, and maybe we'll get the maybe we'll get the band Hanson to do yes. the soundtrack yes. to it. Sure. Yes. And then right now in an umbop, we're gonna be gone. Uh-huh. So <laughs> okay, make sure you uh follow us on social media and all that good stuff. And uh and uh yep. I have been Michael E. Cullen the second. I have been Matthew Haas. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real Two Podcast, a Cullen Park production. 
Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.